that again. Morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church this morning. It's great to see everybody here today. I just encourage you to take your seats as we uh, we start the service this morning. other so much that we're just talking to each other that's great i just want to welcome you all to church this morning it's lovely to see you um as we come together to lift up the name of jesus i just want to read um psalm 96 this morning before we start sing to the lord a new song sing to the lord all the world sing to the lord and praise him proclaim every day the good news that he has saved us Proclaim his glory to the nations, his mighty deeds to all peoples. The Lord is great and is to be highly praised. He is to be honoured more than all the gods. The gods of all other nations are only idols, but the Lord created the heavens. Glory and majesty surround him. Power and beauty fill his temple. Praise the Lord, all people on earth. Praise his glory and might. Praise the Lord's glorious name. Bring an offering and come into his temple. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. Tremble before him all the earth. <coughs> Say to all the nations, the Lord is King. The earth is set firmly in place and cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with justice. Be glad, earth and sky, roar, sea and every creature in you. Be glad, fields and everything in you. The trees in the woods will shout for joy when the Lord comes to rule the earth. He will rule the peoples of the world with justice and fairness. We come together to praise God. We know, don't we, that God is good. Whether today we are celebrating, we are everything is going really well, we praise him because he's good. And whether today we are struggling and things are actually really hard, whatever storm that we're going through, we praise him today because he is good. We know that God is good. And so I'm just going to pray uh, this morning and then we're going to uh, come together to, to sing a couple of songs uh, to praise God. Lord, we thank you this morning that you are our good God. You are the God who made the heavens and the earth. You are the God who gave everything for us that we could know you. We bring to you this morning a sacrifice of praise. No matter what we're facing today, God, we know that you are good. We know that you are with us. And we lift up your name this morning. We worship you because you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Would you like to stand as we worship God together?
work on us this morning with your mighty power. Lord, heal us, deliver us, even while we're sitting in our seats, Lord. Do mighty miracles in us and among us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 let me share with you uh, something. I, I went away a couple of weeks ago and we went various places for various reasons over a few days and I saw two different examples of art. And the first one was I was in London for a few days and I, I, I uh, in between other engagement or uh, things I was doing, I decided to do something I've been meaning to do for years and that is visit Buckingham Palace. I actually paid to go on the tour of the state rooms which are very magnificent and they include an art gallery which is full of priceless paintings, um, Rembrandts, um, Canalettos, all sorts of paintings like that. And as you walk around, there are literally billions of pounds worth of paintings on the wall. It was amazing. 
But a couple of weeks, a couple of days later, I went somewhere different in Nottingham to a different art exhibition, and that art exhibition was almost completely full of these. Now, I don't know if you can see them or not, but we've got a PowerPoint. If the first slide could come up, please, Phil, if you can't see that. Yep, it was full of needles. Now, why would you go and see an art exhibition that was full of needles? Because it wasn't just needles. Let's look at the next slide. This is a man who produces by hand sculptures in the eye of a needle. And you had to view every one of them through a microscope. They were so tiny. So there's one. Let's have a look at the next one. And the next one. And the next one. That's harder to see because it's so tiny. That's the Last Supper. Every figure individually sculpted. And then the last one I think we've got. Now this is not in the eye of a needle. This is what got in the Guinness World Record 10 years ago for the smallest sculpture ever. This is within a human hair. And this is sculpted out of gold by hand within a human hair. Now he's actually since then got another world record for going even smaller than that. But that wasn't on display. That was so small you couldn't even see anything without a, a really powerful microscope. It was absolutely amazing. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. But equally amazing was his story and how he came to produce this artwork. Because at school he didn't do very well. He's dyslexic and autistic and when he was at school, they didn't recognise those things. They just told him he was stupid. In fact, they took him around the whole school and told the whole school, if you're like him, if you don't work, you will end up as nothing, like he will. And he took that away and he decided, with the encouragement of his mum, that he wanted to turn nothing into something. And that's why he produced these things from seemingly nothing into something amazing. And immediately I heard that, I thought of what God does with us. And this passage from 1 Corinthians, this is in the message translation. Take a good look, friends, at who you were when you got called into this life. I don't see many of the brightest and the best among you. Not many influential. Not many from high society families. Isn't it obvious that God deliberately chose men and women that the culture overlooks? and exploits and abuses, chose those nobodies to expose the hollow pretensions of the somebodies. That makes it quite clear that none of you can get by with blowing your own trumpet before God. Everything that we have, right thinking, right living, a clean, a clean slate and a fresh start, comes from God by way of Jesus Christ. And many of us at some times in our lives may have been told or may be told, you won't amount to much. Maybe you don't live up to the expectations of your teacher or someone else. Maybe something negative has been said to you at some point in your life. But God says, you are somebody. You are special. You are important. You are valued. And we're going to sing a song about that now. We're going to do it with a video to follow. Um, I know we have done this here, but a long time ago. And it has actions, okay? Um, and it's quite fast, so you may struggle with the actions, but they're approximately this. It's nobody's a nobody, believe it because it's true. Nobody's a nobody, especially not you. Nobody's a nobody, sorry, I can't remember the next bit. Um, anyway, we'll make it up as we go. I'm sure you're... Uh, sure you, I, I, I haven't, I should have written these words uh, down, shouldn't I? We'll come to that in a minute. Anyway, but in, in the chorus it then goes, I'm no cartoon. So that can either be Mickey Mouse ears or Bugs Bunny ears, depending on whether you like Disney or Warner Brothers. I'm no cartoon, I'm human, so you're human heart. I've got feelings, treat me right. I'm not a superhero with super strength and might. I'm not a mega pop star or super athlete. Uh, I can't remember the rest. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we're not doing well today, am I? Right, let's have the video. Let's have on your feet. Let's, um, let's just, just do whatever actions come naturally. God doesn't mind. I hope. We can turn it up. Nobody's a nobody, especially not you. Nobody's a nobody, and no one's 
detached I'm not sure but I hope you get the message yes. nobody is a nobody especially not you our children are now going to go out uh, and uh, have some activities in the coffee shop so let's just pray for them shall we father God we thank you that none of us is a nobody everybody is special to you and we thank you for that and our children are particularly special to us and to you bless them now as they go into the coffee shop Help them to learn more about you and have some fun, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if the children would like to go uh, with us now. We'd uh, like to... <laughs> I think we're okay? Yeah. Uh, we're really blessed to have Peter Gladwin with us today, who's going to be bringing our message a bit later in the service. So welcome, Peter. We're really glad to have you with us. 
Um, I've just got one main notice. Uh, there are notices um, on the notice sheet in the foyer if you haven't got one, and if you, if you do want to receive them by email, let us know. So do have a look at the notices. But the main thing I want to promote today in the notices is our Hope Uganda Comedy Night. So this will be on Saturday the 21st of October at 7pm. We've got tickets available. We have a comedian, Andy Kind, coming to be with us. He is very good, uh, he's been here before, uh, and he's gonna come and, and do a comedy night for us. Um, the money that we raise from this will go to Hope Uganda, which uh, some of you will know um, is a charity that is uh, linked with our church. Uh, it supports destitute children in Lukaya in Uganda. So it's a really good cause, and we do really need to, to, to raise some money so that we can continue to support these children who have come from the most destitute background. Uh, so that's what the evening is all about. Uh, we've actually got some clips of Andy Kind, uh, just to give you a taster to see if it's something you're interested in. So I'll hand over to the video. Greetings and welcome to another amazing edition of Is It Out of Date, where each week I am given five items from my fridge, one of which I'm informed is massively past its sell-by date. And obviously the idea is that I use my powers of discernment to whittle down the five to a final two, one of which is out of date, one of which isn't. And if I can go through all four without tasting the one which is out of date, I win today's star prize, which is a cleaner to come in once a week and sort out my fridge for me. So if I had to guess at anyone, I would say that it's the double cream. The other contestants are uh, this weird, disgusting soup of some kind. We've got a, uh, a fruit smoothie. We've got some uh, just full fat milk. And we've got some soy milk. It might be the soy milk. Um, but I think probably it's the double cream. I'm going to go straight in with round one. I do not believe that the full fat milk is out of date. A lot of milk is drunk in this place, so I should be on fairly uh, solid ground here. But I hold my breath so that I can't uh, smell anything. So here we go. Round one of is it out of date? I do not believe that the full fat milk is out of date. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, who's at the back, give us a wave, Lindsay. 
Um, we've got tickets, uh, so if you would like to buy them, please come and speak to us. It will be a great night uh, to raise money for Hope Uganda. Thank you. We're going to continue worshipping God, and we're going to carry on on that theme of God choosing the humble, the weak, uh, and strengthening them, making them, uh, lifting them up. Uh, and this is a song, we have sung it before, again, but not for some years. You may not know it. Some of you who are newer to us may not know it. Uh, just uh, join in when you feel ready, and let's praise God again for his love for us.
wonderful thing that we can ever, ever have. And ever think that even though we're alone sitting in our homes sometimes, Lord, when we know that you're there with us and you love us, nothing else matters. Even the biggest worries in our lives, we know because you are our creator, that you are bigger than anything else. And Father, for your love, Lord, is such a comfort, I'm sure, to every one of us here. Lord, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you, Lord, that you sacrificed your life for just us. Each individual person here, God sacrificed his life for you. And Lord, I just want to thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus, that you just give me all that I need in every day. Thank you, Father. Thank you for my fellowship with all my brothers and sisters here today because it's you that brought me here. It's you that's given me that, that, that immersing, that, that, that wonderful pleasure of brotherhood and sisterhood to all fellowship. Thank you, Father, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs>
hand in response to the goodness of God, what, we can, what can we do but to kneel in the dust at the foot of the cross and worship him? Uh, and as we sing this song, perhaps those who are serving communion to, today could bring uh, the bread and wine round. Please hold on to it. We'll share it together once we've finished singing. Please feel free to sit, to stand, to kneel uh, as we worship God. As we come to take all the communion together, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much that we can have this relationship with you. We can come into your presence with thanksgiving. We can praise your name. But Lord, we can only do this because of what you've done for us. 
Lord, you gave everything for us. There had to be a sacrifice. And Lord, you were the sacrifice. You suffered and you died and you bled for us. God, we just remember now what you've done for us and we give you all of our thanks and praise. Thank you so much. And as we take the bread together, we remember that your body was broken for us. And we remember that your blood was shed for us on that cross. And again, we give you our thanks and we give our lives to you because of what you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for making a way for us to know you, that we can enjoy fellowship with you every day of our lives, <coughs> that we can know your goodness and your love that follows after us. We give you everything this morning and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So um, it's my privilege to introduce Peter Gladwin now uh, to bring God's word to us. Shall I just pray for you, Peter? Uh, is that all right? Yeah. Lord, we thank you for Peter. We thank you for his message that he has brought to us today. Lord, we pray that you would anoint him with your Holy Spirit, that you would speak through him, and that you would open our hearts to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to be able to come and uh, share uh, the word of God this morning. And um, we've had a great weekend. Uh, up here, um, great weekend at sharing last night at the Unite meeting uh, that Cedric and Jean are responsible for. You know, in the, in, uh, during the day we were uh, walking around Longton uh, Town Centre and we were um, basically just... Be Can you hear me like that? No. Yeah. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. <clears throat> we were basically um, befriending people and and, um, and 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 just making a conversation about Jesus. I'm sorry, I can't. I have to put this down. It's, uh, it's annoying. <laughs> I'm going to shout. Okay, I don't usually shout, but I'm going to shout. And we were having a conversation. <clears throat> And someone came uh, along and, and I, I thought, Lord, what do I say to this woman? And, and, and the Lord uh, said to me, Peter, just say to me, has she got a question for God? And so I said to her, excuse me, uh, dear, I said, dear, if you could ask one question to the Lord, what would it be? And she said, I tell you what I would say. I would ask him why... Is there so much suffering in the world? Why is there so much suffering in the world? That's a difficult one, isn't it? You know, how can we, mere humans, explain that? There's suffering wherever we go, wherever we look into the world, there's suffering. And you know, it's ironic because Habakkuk also asked the same question. He, he, he complained to God. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people do, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest, we did it. You know, those of us who, who didn't know the Lord and, you know, we complained a lot. It's so easy to blame God. You know, Adam blame God he said it's that woman we've sinned because it's that woman you put us with had a projection God always gets a blame and so um, it, it's incredible to, to be able to come to a, an understanding and I believe you can only do this through the Holy Spirit an understanding of suffering why the why me question, the, the why is this Lord, why is that? When you get understanding 
to that question, you feel so secure. It's like our brother prayed about the love of God. When you know how much God loves you, mm -hmm. nothing else can compare. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's almost like when, when God is in your life, it's like another guy, I, I won't mention the, 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 the swear word, what he said, but he, he said to me, um, when I said to him, um, what, what's happening in your life? He says, well, I live in this hellhole. He said something worse than that. But he said, I, I live in this hellhole. And I turned around to him and I said, well, look, if you knew Jesus, you might live in the hellhole, but the hellhole wouldn't live in you. Can you imagine that? When you've got God living inside of your heart by His Spirit. Wow. Chaos can, uh, is in the world. Yeah, we can't, we can't do all about that except pray and, and, and wait upon the Lord. But you can have peace. Supernatural peace. Now I myself know about chaos. I've wrote a book about it actually. <laughs> and the thing is that at the end of the day, I didn't have the, 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 the I didn't I wasn't mature enough to understand as a young as a young man those why me questions. So I grew up very very bitter, very angry about life. You see, at the age of one, I was burnt, uh, very seriously burnt in a house fire. Now I know you're all looking at me and saying, well he's such a good looking lad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but let me tell you, beneath, beneath, beneath this attire, I have 65 um, plus burns all the way down the body. My feet are partially amputated. And um, I lost the left fingers um, on my left hand. And obviously down the left hand side of my face, I was, my face was badly damaged. I was one year old. I was left before the coal fire. You've probably all got central heating up in these parts, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, we had a coal fire. Remember the old granny's coal fire with the big half yeah. and all those little drawers and, and you had a, what they called the draw tin. Yeah. Well, my mum drew the fire up but she forgot to put the guard up. I went next door for a cup of tea and left me on the carpet. A piece of coal fell out. Within a few moments, the house was ablaze. My sister came running out of the kitchen to try and get me, but she couldn't get up. She couldn't get to me because of the smoke and the flame. She was scared. She was only four. And so she ran next door and shouted, Mommy, there's a fire! And so my mum came screaming out of the house. But unfortunately, as my sister had run out, she'd slammed the door shut. <laughs> So you can imagine what my mum went through on that doorstep. There's a fire going off and the baby's on the carpet. When the fire brigade turned up, they thought he's perished, he's dead. There's no way he's going to survive that. And so they hosed the fire down and it was just black. And in those days, we didn't have this health and safety material. So the fumes should have cut, killed me off the, off, off, the, off the material of the whatever was in the, in the front room. But it didn't, because I heard a little cry. <coughs> and the fireman said he, some, some panelling had fallen off the roof and, and had fallen on top. And, and as he lifted it up, there was I, a one-year-old baby, alive. And the thing is that I was obviously rushed into hospital, um, emerged, they told my parents I won't survive. Um, if the burns wouldn't kill me, the shock would, and da 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 da. But I survived. Yes, I, I went through reconstructive surgery uh, for, the, for the next two and a half years. But the problem was for me, not just was I uh, burnt uh, physically, but I was also burnt psychologically. As I grew up, I began to, to realise that, that this fire had caused me massive psychological problems. And one of the reasons why was that my parents could not talk about the fire. They couldn't talk to me about 
what had taken place and how it had happened. All they could talk about is blaming each other for the fire. You were out in the pub. My dad was a drinker, a gambler. Tragically, he took his own life when I was 27. My mom, she was quite a violent woman, a drinker. In fact, the, the, they used to fight like, oh, it was awful. To see as kids seeing our parents fighting, it, physically punching each other. So I grew up with this, this, this question mark because my parents couldn't tell me what happened in the fire because they felt so guilty. My mum felt so guilty about leaving me on that carpet. And so she couldn't, she said, we don't talk about that, Peter. That's the past, we don't go there. Well, you might not go there, but I want to go there. And so again, this bitterness and this anger and this big question mark, this, why me? And so, obviously, I, I, I went off track as, a, as an early age, a very early age. Started getting in trouble with the police. Before long, at the age of 12 year old, I was brought before the courts and I was sent to prison for three months. 12 year old. I mean, I used, to, I used to steal a lot. I, was just, I used to steal food and toys and because, we, my, I, because my dad was a gambler, he used to lose all the money. We never, that's the sort of house we were brought up in. It was horrendous, the upbringing that I had. In fact, people turn around to me and say to me, Peter, I'd love a testimony like yours. I say, no, you wouldn't. I'd love a testimony like yours. <laughs> When I was 15, I was traveling home on a bus and about 16 lads got on at the next stop and I was with a friend of mine and I was about to, to ask that question again, why me? Because one of, after they beat us up, they beat us, give us a right, a terrible beating. One of them pulled out a knife and stabbed my friend in the back, went to stab me in my chest. I turned around and he, he stuck the knife in the top of my arm. The knife went in so deep that it, cut, it, it severed the tendons in this right arm and as a result, after an emergency operation, I lost a, this, the use of this right arm for two and a half years. So I'm crippled in this hand, <laughs> and I'm crippled in this hand, and, and, and believe it or not, I, was in a, I worked in an upholstery factory, I was a cutter, an apprentice cutter. So something good was happening to me, but even that was, the rug was pulled from under, from under my feet in that as well. That why me question? I couldn't answer it. The only way that I could answer it was get involved and start to, start to divulge in alcohol and, 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 and drugs. To suppress all that pain, the pain of the past. That's what a lot of, last night we were at the Unite meeting. Uh, down in down in um, in Longton, and and there's about 30 guys who have all come all come from horrific backgrounds. Of all the, they've all come from addiction, alcoholism, and drugs. They've all got stories. They've all got them questions. Why me? And so, <laughs> by the age of, uh, of in, in my early 20s, I was a complete wreck. A complete wreck both physically and psychologically. And then, <laughs> here we go again. I'm asking that question again, why me? Because a car came along one evening when I was drunk in the, in, 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 in the street, in the town centre, hit me, knocked me up in the air, left me for dead in the middle of the road. I'm back in hospital. Bus skull, bus femur, bus body. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I got out of hospital after two or three months, boy was I in despair. I didn't know God. My God was drugs, alcohol, gambling, just like my dad. I was a, re I was a wreck. So much so that on, um, when I was uh, about 30 years of age, I thought, that's it. I've had enough. I can't take this pain anymore. There was no way out for me. 
And so I went to a bridge and I stood on this bridge and I thought about jumping. I thought a couple of seconds, it'll all be over, the pain, the pain will be gone. But I turned around and just on my right hand side of this north bridge, there's all these uh, apartment blocks, these flats, blocks of flats. And I stopped at this block of flats and, and I counted the floors, one, two, three, four, five. And I thought, dear me, that's where my mom lives. I'm thinking of jumping from this bridge. My mom lives on that fifth floor. She'll be able to see where I've jumped from. So I stepped back and I went up to my mom's. My mom didn't know what to say to me, so she rang my sister. She knew I was a mess. She rang my sister who, about 12 weeks earlier, had become what's called a committed Christian. She'd become what's called the born again Christian. Mm -hmm. And so over the telephone, not in a church or, or a cathedral or anything like that, but over the telephone on the fifth floor of a block of flats, she shared a message with me that has transformed my life. She shared with me three words. God loves you. God loves you. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan to transform your life. I said, what do you mean, Anna? Who, 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 who's this God? What do you mean? What, 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 what? How can he help me? I was honestly, I was, I, I was, I, I'm beyond helping. God can transform your life. And so over the telephone, I said this prayer: Father, forgive me. I'm a mess. I'm hooked on this. I'm drinking. I'm gambling. I'm a mess. I'm a sinner, Lord. Please help me. I invite you into my life, Jesus. And you know. Let me tell you this, it came into my life on that telephone. Amen. Next time you get a telephone call, it might be a salesman or somebody trying to flog him something to you. Tell them about Jesus, hallelujah. That'll get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Do my head in them uh, phone calls. <laughs> but this phone call, wow, changed my entire life. You know, I went, I started to go to church. I, I, um, I couldn't, st you know, I didn't, need, I didn't need anybody to pick me uh, to go to church, to pick me up to go to church. I wanted to go to church. I'd get there by both sides. I'd get there somehow. And um, after a couple of years of, of uh, uh, getting into the Bible and and, um, and, and worshipping God and, and praying and fellowshipping, and I heard the Lord speak to me very clearly. And he said, Peter, I want you to go to Bible college. I went, uh, <laughs> me? I said, Lord, I can't go to Bible college. No chance, I can't, you know, a, a semicolon to me, something you go to doctors with, then might, you know. <laughs> I haven't got a clue, Lord. I left school with no qualifications and, you know, no chance, Lord. And the Lord said, don't say no chance, Peter. Nothing is impossible for me. Amen. And so I thought, wow, okay. So I went to Bible college. I get there and my first year was, was learning all about semicolons and, <laughs> and, and footnotes and bibliographies and dear me, what's all this? <laughs> what a humbling experience, learning to study. And when people know when people know that you're not academic, when people know that that that, that uh, you lack that educational uh, that ed ed educational skill, it's very humbling. But God says He lifts the humble up. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, a lot of where we are today is because I, in the flesh, am weak. I am weak, but He is strong. God can take a nobody and make him into a somebody in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's often mountain climbing that God calls you to. 
Something that you can't do in your own strength. This way, he gets a glory. And so I'm at this Bible college and my first year it was it was learning how to study and I was getting by. I wasn't, wasn't getting, you know, the I mean there were some students there, and this is Nantwich by the way, Ealing Bible College up in Nantwich. And um, they were they were getting up and they were revising for ex, uh, an exam about the about an hour's egg uh, revising and they'd get an A plus. I had to revise it a week and get a D. But I passed. I passed. And not only do I, did I graduate with a certificate in theology and pastoral studies, but whilst I was there, a friend of mine came to me and he said, Peter, have you seen the girls that have come over from Switzerland? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not interested in girls. I'm here to study the Bible. <laughs> and so as soon as he went, I ran to where the girls were. <laughs> <laughs> and I got there, and I looked into this room full of Swiss girls, and I went, wow! <laughs> oh! Man, she is gorgeous! Oh! Well, come on, lads, you know, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Blonde hair, blue eyes, figure like an hourglass. Let me tell you, I was smitten in that. And then the enemy turned around and said, yeah, she's beautiful, Peter, but you have no chance. Look at you, you're a cripple. You know? The enemy will always try to rob you of what God's got in store for you. That your job is not to let him happen. Not, not to believe in his lies. The devil's a liar. Yeah. But I'll be honest, I thought, well, yeah, you know, I have got these disabilities. and She's not going to want somebody like me. So I walked away. Everybody go, oh. And so I walked away back to my room thinking, yeah, she's not for me. Anyway, the next day, I'm walking down the corridor, the Bible corridor, it's quite a narrow corridor. And so I see him at the top of the corridor coming towards me. I went, oh, she's here. <laughs> what do I say? <coughs> anyway, she gets down to me. And I went, um, I said, hello. <laughs> she went, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I said, my name's Peter. I said, what's your name? She said, my name is Sarah. <laughs> I said, uh, oh, right. I said, uh, where are you from, Sarah? She went, I'm from Switzerland. <laughs> I went, Switzerland? But where's that? <laughs> <laughs> she said, um, I mean, where are you from? I said, oh, I'm from Halifax. <laughs> where's Yorkshire? So I thought, come on, Peter, you've got to be brave here. Come on, got to go for this. It's not good for man to be alone. Come on. God grant you the desires of your heart. Come on. Amen. And so I said to her, uh, uh, Sarah, look, uh, there's a few of us going out um, uh, to the cinema tonight. Would you like to come? She went, yeah. I went, yeah. <laughs> she went, yeah. I went, oh, OK, I'll meet you at half past six in reception and so off we went to the cinema she's watching the film I'm watching her boom, 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 boom. don't keep me eyes off her oh dear me gets back to the Bible college we talked for a few hours and I thought I've got to go for this if I don't go for this now all these six foot strapping hunks Bible college students all younger than me she, she's going to be gone and so I thought, come on Peter Bullseye, go for the bullseye. Here. And so I said to her, Sarah, I said, uh, we get on, don't we? She went, yeah. I said, uh, we both love Jesus, don't we? She said, yeah. I said, uh, well, will you be my girlfriend? She went, nine. Oh. Oh. I went, nine? 
Oh. Number nine, boss, what's that mean? Nine, it means no, Peter. Nine, walk back to my room. The enemy kicked my head in again. Do you know, the enemy has a, you know, he's, like I said earlier on, he's trying to, he tries to rob you of, of, of the joy, of the peace, of anything that God wants to do in your life. And sometimes, you, you know, you've got to rise above that and you've got to believe the word of God. In fact, I was talking to the Lord the next day about it and, and, and I felt the Lord say to me, Peter, you know, don't give up. Don't give up on Sarah. And I thought, Lord, she's not interested. Don't give up, Peter. And you know, uh, there might be someone here who, who's uh, heard from the Lord about something. And it's a mountain. Impossible for you to achieve it. I believe God would say to you, don't give up. You might not be able to get there or climb it, but God will help you to. It's called walking in faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Believe it. What you can't see. That's how God works. He loves to see faith. He loves to see you getting out of the boat and not sitting there in the boat with all the, the, you know, the spectators. God's looking for participators in his kingdom building. Amen. And so, I said, right, Lord. I said, okay, I'll, I'll give it to you, Lord. I'll surrender it to you. And anyway, a few hours went by. I went on a fast and, and um, a few hours went by. And I'm walking through the gardens of Ealing Bible College and I saw Sarah sat on a bench. And she looked as though she had something on her mind. And so I went over to her and I said, uh, Sarah, said, are you all right? She went, no, I'm not. I said, I said, what's the matter with you? She said, me and you. I went, me and you? What do you mean? She said, I've not stopped. I've not been able to stop thinking about you since you asked me to be your girlfriend. <laughs> really? Um, really? Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! <laughs> Two years later, we were married. <laughs> God is a good God, amen? God is a restorer of our lives. You know, I'm married to the most beautiful princess. Let me tell you this. We've got three kids, beautiful kids. You know, but even when you get married and even when you have kids and, you, 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 you know, God is, is, is using you and you, everything is going well, it doesn't mean to say that you don't have troubles, that you don't have, 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 have issues to face. Jesus said in this world you will have trouble. We go, today we go all over the world. I mean, we've ministered in Cambodia, South Africa, India, Australia, Papua New Guinea. We've been, a, we go, God sends us everywhere. But let me tell you this, I've had my trouble. But I know God is a conqueror of trouble. Yeah. And no matter what is going on on the outside, we, if we put our trust in the Lord's promises, you know, we pray for our kids, don't we? Come on. Yes. We all pray for our children. And the thing is, my children all went to Sunday school. They were brought up in the church. But then when they got to about 13, when they joined secondary school, I remember clearly going up the steps and saying, come on, kids, church. And then I heard that. I heard my children say, oh, Dad, it's not for us. It's for you, Dad. It's not for us. We don't want to go. And so I had a choice. Do I, do I force them into the car? Do I, do I say, get out of that bed now and get in that car? Or do I leave it to the Lord? And so obviously, I, did, I left it to the Lord. But let me tell you, what a journey. You know, especially when kids get, get to secondary school and start learning all the stuff that uh, goes on with teenagers. Oh, man. But we never stop praying for our children. Never stop praying. You know, I was sharing yesterday, I heard a story about um, a woman who, um, she, 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 um, 
She was baking, baking bread in this bread machine uh, for over 20 years. And, and basically, one day, uh, the kitchen wall collapsed. And people came in to, to, to restore it and find out what happened. And, and they, they, they said to well, it's collapsed because you've had your bread machine up against the wall and your bread machine has been vibrating for, for decades against this wall and eventually it's weakened it and it's collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, God spoke to me about that. Because as we pray, as we pray, but all the situations in our life, it's like our prayers are vibrating in God's kingdom. Yeah. And eventually, as we consistently commit our children or whatever it is we're praying for to the Lord, that wall will come down. Hallelujah. Amen. But we've got to keep praying. <clears throat> and you know, a few months ago, my 22-year-old son came to me. And he said, Dad, I need to talk to you. I went, oh no, what's he done? <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, we've had some issues with him. Really big issues. And I thought, here we go. I said, what is it? He went, Dad, he said, I want to say sorry. I went, what, what do you mean? He said, I want to say sorry for all I've said, all I've done. He said, Dad, I've surrendered my life to Jesus. Aww. And me, me being, an, me, be, me being an evangelist, I turned around and said, have you done that? <laughs> I was shocked. <laughs> I mean, it came out the blue. A bit like that bread making machine, the wall came down. I'm like, what? <laughs> Do you know, next Sunday, he gets baptised, hallelujah. Oh. Let me tell you, since he was 13 years of age, he smoked cannabis. 13 years of age. <coughs> you know, these secondary schools, I'm telling you, you pray for your kids. And it doesn't matter where you are, you might be in an affluent area, you might be in a, a poor area, wherever you are. I tell you, we are in a battle. And we need to get down on our knees and we need to pray to God. We need to pray for the protection of our kids. Yes. So the cannabis is gone, the smoking's gone, even the vaping's gone. Oh, hallelujah. God keeps his promises. You know, when I left Bible college, um, believe it or not, I mean, I was on probation when I was 12 years of age. I ended up getting a job working for probation. <laughs> I mean, we might, we, you know, I mean, that doesn't happen. But it does happen if you know the living God, hallelujah. Amen. Because my Bible says that the doors he opens, no one can close. And so I worked, um, I worked in the youth offending team for a couple of years, and I got promotion. They said to me, Pete, we want you to go work at HMP Winchester, Cat B Prison. Dear me, I was in prison when I was 12. <laughs> I won't, uh, so I get Sam, I've got keys, I've got radio, uh, I'm walking around the prison in and out of cells. I open this door of this prison cell and this guy looked at me and went, Peter, what are you doing here? <laughs> I went, never mind me, what are you what doing here? <laughs> God can turn your life around. He can take you from being a nobody into being a somebody for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How are the ashes? You know, God, God, the Bible says, I revealed myself to those who were not looking for me. I wasn't looking for God. But he was looking for me. And if you're here today, this morning, you might not know him, but he knows you and he's looking for you. And you know, my advice is this to anyone who who's here who doesn't know God personally. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about a religion here. In fact, it was Oswald Chambers who said this, I want to know Jesus, not something that looks like him. Yes. So if you're here this morning and you haven't got a personal relationship with God, then maybe this is your moment. You know, the Christian walk is about moments, significant moments when, when heaven opens and extraordinary things happen. You know, um, 
I'm the author of uh, this book called Out of the Ashes. Basically, obviously, it's my testament written in full. And, you know, I mean, it's been translated into, into about six languages. It, we get invited to go, you know, I mean, I'm in school with no qualifications. But God has turned me into an international author. How does that happen? My strength, my ability, my intellect took me to a bridge. But God didn't help me throw myself off that bridge. He had me throw myself onto that bridge that leads me to God. And that bridge is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. A bridge that brings life, not death. Amen. Have you crossed that bridge? It's an amazing bridge. You know, and, and obviously being a, a bit, uh, you know, I mean, somebody said to me, you should write a, you should write a book, Peter. So I wrote, the, wrote this manuscript, had it on the computer for five years. And, um, you know, thought no of it. And then one day two strangers came into, uh, my, my, wife, my wife had a little bistro. And they came in and they must have seen a couple of Christian books on the, on the shelves. And, and one of them came up after to pay his bill and said, um, gave me his card and said, I'd like to know a little bit more about you. And I thought, dear me, that's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I looked at his card and it said, Bill Partington, United Christian Broadcasting. I thought, oh, them I've heard of them. Anyway, I went home. And um, typed this uh, email up to Bill and just shared who we were and what we were doing. And then I'm just about to send it, and the Holy Spirit said to me, attach your manuscript. And so I attached the, the manuscript and just said, could you give me a little bit of advice on this, Bill? And um, anyway, I didn't hear it for about three months. And, and I thought, oh, he's probably just read it, shelved it or whatever. And then I got an email from him. And he said, uh, Peter, we've been in a, um, a meeting with a global publishing company, uh, Lion Hudson. He said, and they asked me if I had any good testimonies. He said, I just happened to have your manuscript uh, on the shelf. He said, so I pulled it off and I gave it to them. They came back a couple of days later and said, we want this in a book. Four weeks later, I had, a, I had a book contract with a global publishing company. Let me tell you, God can take a nobody and turn him into a somebody for Jesus. Amen. This is what God does. So that he gets the glory. My question is, are you allowing God into those into your life into those areas of your life are you listening to god are you listening to the impossible what he's speaking to you about in your own strength are you obeying him and don't say to me well it's all right for you peter you, you, you're a young lad <laughs> god it don't matter about age you could be young, middle-aged, senior citizen, whatever. God has got a plan for your life. Yeah. You know, I was, um, I was in a gallery uh, myself uh, a couple of weeks ago down in uh, Chelmsford, speaking at a couple of events down there. And I uh, was in this gallery, and we were all these uh, paintings. And I looked up, and I saw this painting by Laura, and I thought it said, uh, um, I thought it said 118 quid. And I looked at it and I said, 11, is that? That's 11,800 quid. And it's in a limited edition. So I went up to the lady and I said, how's that? And I, uh, I'm like, that Larry uh, print there, it's 11,800 quid. She said, oh yeah, she said, but have you noticed what's on it? I said, no. Well, you've seen the signature, haven't you? It's a Lowry signature. That's what gives it its value. You know, God spoke to me. In, in 2 Timothy verse, verse 10, it says, You and I are God's masterpieces. Created anew to carry out the plans that God planned long ago. God planned me standing here right now long, long ago. He's planned a lot of things in your lives. And I hope and pray you're discovering them. But let me tell you this. God wants to give you more. He wants to give you more of himself so that you 
can become his masterpiece. Never mind a Lowry. You are more valuable than a Lowry. You are a masterpiece. Wow. To turn uh, to turn around the, the, the pain of the past for me is incredible. Yes, my sins have been forgiven and I thank God for that. I'm going to spend eternity in heaven. Come on. You are if you've confessed your sins and you've come into this relationship. But let me tell you this. I have been healed from the psychological pain of the past. Do you know, my mum became a born-again Christian. Wow. Incredible. About a year after me, and I sat down with her in that fifth floor of that block of flats. And I sat down and said, Mum, in each time we talked about what happened to me as a child, Mum, it'll set me free so much. Know it knowing what happened I saw a tear come to her eye and she said to me okay Peter it was a terrible day and she went on to tell me how she'd put me in front of the fire and how she'd gone next door for a cup of tea and then the tears just continued to roll down I put my arms on I said mum I love you I forgive you mum Forgive me, Dad, but I committed suicide when I was 27. The relief, not just in my mind and in my heart, but I could see this darkness just lift off. Mm -hmm. God did not want my mom to carry that burden, that oppression, for 30 odd years. He filled her with joy that day. He filled her with peace. He broke the chains that were binding her. And that's what God does. He breaks chains. I hope and pray that you've been encouraged by, by what I've shared with you this morning. Our God is a transforming God. It doesn't matter where you've, where you've been, what you've done, where you've come from. God can transform your life. And yeah, you might say, well, Peter, I haven't had any problems with drugs, alcohol, gambling, this, that, and the other. No, you haven't. And I thank God for that. But you're still a sinner. You still need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mother Teresa once said, even I need a Savior. We need Jesus. And Jesus, believe it or not, I believe Jesus needs us. He loves us so much, he needs us. It compels him to, to, for us to come to him because of his love. God, God can give you a security, a peace, and a joy, and a knowledge that uh, uh, far outpasses any chaos that's going on in the world. And let's be honest, we're in, you know, our ministry, we're out of Ashes Ministries. We work a lot of, in Poland. We've brought a lot of Ukrainians back to Newport which was a bureaucratic nightmare, but we've done it, praise God. Yeah. We've got 10 families, Ukrainian families, um, down in Newport, South Wales, that's where I live right now, me and my family. We've, the war's breaking out all over. We've, we've heard over the last few days what's happening in Israel. Doesn't the Bible say that from the north comes an enemy, from the south comes an enemy? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it could well be, I'm not saying it is. But you never know. This could be the return of the Lord. If somebody had come to you a few years ago and said, well, in a few months' time, the world's going to stop, you'd say, have you lost your mind or what? But then COVID it, and the world stopped. You know, the news reports are saying that Israel were caught off guard. They were caught off guard. Well, let me tell you, let's not you and me be caught off guard to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Because he's going to come like a thief in the night. Yeah. But he is going to come. Yeah. And my prayer is that you will be ready. Yeah. That I will be ready. Yes, we're here to, to, to worship God, to serve God. Yes, we're here to, to go out into the communities. To share the gospel. What, whatever opportunity God gives you and I. We have to make every, every, make the most of every opportunity. And that's my prayer for this church. I get a sense of real community in this church. I get a sense, you know, as I walked in, our friendliness, love. You know? This is, a, this is a church on a hill. 
that God wants to shine the light into the community to draw his people to Jesus and then into church I think that's the right direction by the way mm -hmm. not church Jesus I think Jesus church mm -hmm. when I got saved nobody told me to go to church they told me to come to Jesus mm -hmm. guys it's been wonderful um, I just want to pray if that's alright um, I just want to pray in closing um, just to say I have got some of these books out at the back um, if you want to get a copy great Christmas present uh, early Christmas present we also give these books to prisoners for free if you'd like to sponsor a copy we give these you can imagine my testimony to prisoners in prison let me tell you that God really uses it so you could, if you want to if you're feeling blessed you can sponsor a copy but let me just pray let me just pray for someone in here today who who's on the fringe, who's thinking about a relationship with the living God that has not dived in yet. I believe this is your moment. I believe that you're hearing God calling you. I believe this is your moment to say, yes, God, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. Let's just bow our heads. If that's you, just, just follow, follow me in this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come to you right now and I thank you that you are calling me to become your child. Mm -hmm. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for Jesus who paid the penalty of my sins. I give you praise that you raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus is a living saviour. I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I ask you to help me to follow you for the rest of my life. I totally surrender to you, Lord, from this day forward, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you've said that prayer, come and see me afterwards, come and see Lauren, come and see one of the leaders. But it's important that, um, it's important that you, you confess to the Lord and that you know, the leaders of this church can support you and help you. Guys, um, you're a wonderful bunch of people. It's an, a blessing coming amongst you this morning. I hope I haven't offended anybody this morning. I hope and pray that you've been encouraged. And I hope and pray that, that you will continue to shine for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is shining upon you I believe that I believe that the glory of the Lord is shining upon this church I just felt that, that, that scripture come into my heart it's for you guys the glory of the Lord is shining upon you, you many of you guys are going to have divine appointments next week I really believe that someone's going to doctors next week let me just Thank you, Father. I just pray for that person who's got an appointment with the doctors next week. I just pray in the name of Jesus right now for healing. Healing and restoration. And that doctor will be surprised. Godly surprised in the name of Jesus. Some of you have got a, a, a appointments next week. Significant. You might think it's just you're going through your daily, daily routine. But actually, God has set that appointment up. God has set that appointment up. And God is, God is, is not going to um, bring you into a, 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 into a conversation where you feel stressed and, and, and pressured to, to share the gospel. It's going to be natural. This conversation that you, someone's going to have here, or more than one, it's going to be a natural conversation where the window opens so freely that the Holy Spirit just breezes into the heart of that person you're having that conversation with. Get yourself ready, church, because I really do believe that God is going to take you to another level of supernatural encounters. Oh, I'll tell you what, some of the supernatural... I, I, I'll, invite me back again, I'll share some of the <laughs> supernatural encounters that I've had. Oh, incredible. And so, Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would just unleash, unleash all your power, all your might, all those supernatural gifts 
that you've given this church. I just pray in the name of Jesus that this church would stand up. They would stand up and start using those gifts in spirit and in truth. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for, for, for Al Sager. We pray for a revival, a fire to come on this town, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the lost to be found, for the blind to see, for the cripples to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the pastor and the leaders of this church. We pray that you would continue to use them mightily to, to share your word. The word that brings life. Life. Let me tell you guys, I've been through the fire, a fire that tried to destroy me. But I've now received a fire that has brought me life, hallelujah. Amen. And I pray that same fire, I pray that same fire to burn in your hearts for Jesus. Amen. We sang that song about the wonder of God not losing. In fact, I spoke about that last night. Not losing this wonder, this wondrous understanding and, and idea and reality of God. He could turn up like that. In fact, he's here now by his spirit. But he could turn your life around in a moment. And boy, has he done that with me. He's turned me upside down. But the right side up. <laughs> Let's give Jesus all the glory and all the praise. Amen. <laughs> if anybody would like some prayer, I'm at the back. We're having a coffee in the book, at the bookstore. If you'd like some private prayer, then come along and... And, um, and we'll pray for you. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Pete, for sharing that. Really looking forward to spending some time with you later on. But let's just finish our worship by giving Jesus all the glory. Amen. Uh, as we sing about Jesus, our living hope. Let's stand and worship God as we do. Um, the offering baskets will come round. Please, if you're a visitor, don't feel under any obligation to give. But if you want to contribute, it's to help the work of the Lord in here and further afield.
We believe that was a word from the Lord in, in, in a heavenly or another language, a tongue, in the, using the words uh, that Paul gives us. Uh, it may be a word for a specific person, it may be a word for all of us, and if anyone uh, feels that they have any interpretation from the Lord, I just invite them to share it with us. Thank you. 